Hey, what's going on? So today we are talking Fuji X-T4 and my experience using it over the past several months. Guys, I have some good news and bad news, so and let's get into it. I wanna jump right into it. I bought the Fuji X-T4 back in January of this year, 2022. Recommended to me by a friend of mine and my initial excitement for this camera was off the charts. I mean, the fact that, you know, it's an APS-C camera, 26 megapixels, it's got in-body five axis stabilization, and supposedly, supposedly shoots 4K60. But unfortunately, that is not the case. My initial reason for jumping into this camera was actually to get out of my Panasonic GH5. As much as I love that camera and its capabilities, and I think till this day it's still a reasonable camera to have and to use for a lot of projects, I always struggled with color grading that Panasonic footage. You know, I'm, I'm not a full-time colorist by any means or anything like that, but it just, there was something about the colors I never really enjoyed working with. So when this Fuji X-T4 came out, the fact that it could shoot 4K and 60, which that was something that the GH5 could not, or could it? Now I can't remember off the top of my head. Okay, so I actually was correct because I just looked it up real quick. Panasonic GH5 could not shoot 4K 60, and that was one of the main reasons why I jumped into this Fuji X-T4. The other reason why I wanted to jump into the Fuji system specifically was because of their color science. They have the closest color science to match with the Leica colors than any other camera body and that's kind of the reason why I thought perhaps having my SL2 as like my main camera and workhorse and then having the X-T4 for more of a running gun type of setup would be ideal because I could help match the colors. Boy was I wrong. And by boy was I wrong, I could not have been more wrong about that. So, so, so wrong about that. Let me explain. There was one project that I shot with this Fuji XC4 client project and the amount of effort that we had to go in there to fix the coloring for that project was something that I hope that I never have to go through again. We ended up having to scour through online resources like Fiverr and Upwork until like three or four in the morning for just looking for colors that would be able to fix the issues that we were having uh, on this project. Specifically because of the green tones that were just, that they literally overcame the entire video. So that alone really triggered me and I really kind of started to look down upon the Fuji X-T4. But that wasn't the tipping point. The tipping point came when I started noticing that the camera was overheating whenever I was shooting in 4K60. And I'm not talking about I'm shooting 4K60 for like a minute straight or two, three minutes straight. I'm talking about like 15, 20 second clips. You know, maybe the most that I shot was maybe a 30 or 40 second clip, maybe even a minute. But I kept getting the overheating signal. Even, even indoors, not even outside in the sun. Indoors, air conditioning, everyone's cool. Like, there's plenty of airflow around the camera. It was still getting the overheating signal. So it wasn't until I went to a Fuji rep day at um, a photo store called ABC Photo, um, local store down here in South Florida, that I started speaking with the rep about it and I was like, look, I'm having this issue. The camera keeps giving me this overheating message. What's going on here? Like, is it the memory card? Is it the dummy battery that I'm using for the V-mount that's connected to the V-mount battery? Like what, what could be the issue? We tested out the SD cards, wasn't that. We swapped out the dummy battery and just used regular batteries, wasn't that. And then finally the rep told me, what he ended up saying was that the Fuji X-T4 is not meant to shoot 4K 60 for for long periods of time or something like that. I, I don't exactly remember what he said, but basically that was the gist of it. That this camera was not made to shoot in 4K 60 for a long period of time. Now, call me crazy, but if I'm looking at the listing online, B&H Photo, one of the top features it talks about is 
4K60. This camera can shoot 4K60. No issues. And that just like, that blows my mind that they're advertising it as a 4K60 camera, yet it overheats almost every time that I try to shoot in that frame rate. To, to say that this camera is a 4K60 video shooting camera and then have it crap out on me so often, so much, this whole situation with the 4K60, it's really left a bad taste in my mouth with Fuji, unfortunately. And I'm actually trying to sell my Fuji gear right now. And, it, and it's really unfortunate because I actually love the photos coming out of this camera. The photos are absolutely awesome, especially using them with these lenses I have here, the 23 F2 and the 16 to 55 2.8. Both amazing lenses. They produce beautiful imagery and the photos, they actually come out spectacular from this camera. It's really just the video issue that's the main issue. I mean, if this camera did not overheat every time I shot 4K60 and also there was a little tweak on the color science because it is really green, the cast on all the videos that I've been taking with this thing, I would probably use this as my main video camera just because of the actual footprint of the camera. I mean, my Leica SL2 is substantially bigger and now that I've put the cage on there with all the accoutrements, it's it's a pretty big rig. So for running gun style, like I, I would love to be able to just use this, especially with a flip out screen. I don't necessarily need a monitor or recorder with me if I really want to keep it like incognito mode. But man, it's just, it's really disappointing that this camera did not live up to its specs, unfortunately. I I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, they live and die by this camera. I know I've met some photographers that still are using the X the XT the XT3. Yeah, there we go. And they absolutely love that camera. I see their work. It's amazing work. You know, I, I am curious to know whether other people have been having this issue with the 4K60 overheating and the green cast color on all the footage. You know, maybe there's like some setting that I have on or don't have on that could completely change the way that this camera works. And I, I, I hope if you do have those settings uh, dialed in, please let me know and bash me in the comments for calling this camera, you know, less than what it is. I just think if you're gonna say that this is a 4K 60 camera, make sure that it shoots 4K 60 without any issues. That's all I'm saying, really. Though I have been bashing this camera pretty much for this whole video, uh, besides the quality of the images that come out of this camera, the, another feature that I do really like about it is how quick and snappy the autofocus is. Uh, especially during video, this thing grabs focus extremely fast and it's very accurate especially and i hate to be saying this but compared to my leica sl2 the autofocus on this thing is way better uh, just that's been it. it that's my opinion and i've tested both cameras and the fuji autofocus definitely works a lot better than the leica sl2 one unfortunately but you know i'm hoping down the line like i will uh get their stuff together with these autofocus motors and you know there's an SL3 coming down the line we'll see so here's to uh phase detection autofocus hoping for it really hoping for it so at the end of the day if you're looking for like a hybrid camera that can do a, a little bit of video and photos this I, I I would probably still suggest this camera for you but specifically for video, larger video productions that you really need good quality video, I wouldn't necessarily point you towards this camera. Shooting video for solely Instagram, TikToks, you know, just for social, even for YouTube and stuff like that, I'm, I'm sure you'll be more than capable to grab whatever you need with this camera. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It would really, really mean a lot if you guys would give it a thumbs up. It really goes a long way. If you're not subscribed, Definitely think about subscribing. I post uh, videos about Leica specific gear, some other gear as you can see, working with models, client work, and I try to answer as many questions as I possibly can in the comments. And if you're curious about some of my other content, definitely check me out on Instagram and I am slowly building that TikTok as well. So stay tuned for that. Until next time, I'm Bridget Quintana. You have a great day.